Let me bring you in from the icy cold and offer you a hot drink along with some concluding remarks. To those of you who have never seen freshwater ice in real life or simply choose to ignore it, I hope this lesson gave you an awareness of its far-reaching influence on nature and people. Your most important takeaway from our discussion regarding the backscatter behavior of freshwater ice should be that thaw and frost drastically affect the penetration of incident radar waves and therefore control the information content of the resulting image. I believe that the case studies have demonstrated the excellent utility of radar satellites for the characterization of lake ice and river ice properties and processes. Perfect solutions of any kind are hard to come by. But radar remote sensing offers several advantages over other observation approaches, including optical remote sensing and visual surveillance. Monitoring is the key to managing the limitations that the breakup case studies have exposed. The ICE Road study illustrated the unparalleled capacity of radar waves to detect structural properties of solidly frozen ice cover. You should be aware that this lesson does not provide a complete picture in terms of stakeholder information needs, image analysis methods or radar imaging technologies. For example, we did not talk about the mapping of bedfast ice, the potential of polarimetric discriminators or the application of low frequency radar images. As for radar interferometry, we touched on its utility for the mapping of ice cover modulations, but lacked sufficient time to look at other applications. For instance, interferometric coherence offers advantages over backscatter intensity for the monitoring of freeze-up processes. Actually, it can support any application that aims to distinguish water from more stable surface cover types. For example, the mapping of shorelines, of floods, and sea ice leads. However, the temporal baseline must be on the order of seconds to minutes, so that the water loses coherence and the ice or land maintain coherence. By the way, such coherence measurements could also benefit monitoring of river ice, because they should reveal whether rubble ice formations are stagnant or moving, or in other words, represent hazardous ice jams or harmless ice runs. Data acquired during the Tandem X science phase have enabled the development of several promising instant interferometry applications. Their operational implementation is currently awaiting the introduction of missions that can deliver the required data consistently. Finally, a plea to those among you who develop applications for remote sensing images at present or in the future. No matter what surface cover type and imaging technology you deal with, please make every effort to validate your development by means of field data. There is a small chance that such data are already available, but if this is not the case, then get out there and start collecting. Fieldwork also provides a great opportunity to meet up with end users and determine their information needs. Remember that you need to know these requirements to be able to develop useful applications. We've come to the end of this lesson. I hope that you have enjoyed it and learned something new.